I love we're just kind of breaking it open. There's so many ways to be a prophet, mm-hmm. right? And and we do need to be bold and like we do, we can't hide. And, you know, like we've all talked about that you have to be kind of kind of in it, mm-hmm. right? But there's yeah. just so many ways like to, to, whether it's a word or a gesture or listening or right. presence, like, like a prophetic presence, like there's just something beautiful because all of this communicates the love of the father. Mm-hmm. All these, all this communicates the life of Jesus, the way he looks, the way he sees, the way he has mercy, right? Um, I think that's the gift of our life as, as, as baptized sons and daughters that, that we have this capacity to be a prophet at all times, whether you're, you're looking at your kids or whether you're, you're out on the streets, right? Like it's the way you live your life. Um, yeah. I just, I love how we're kind of breaking it open. And in, in a world that's kind of oversaturated with mm-hmm. words mm-hmm. and people talking and saying, having opinions and yeah. all that. We have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For the very beginning, it was uncomfortable with this. Mm-hmm. Just but the idea of the proposed, the Christian proposal is that my, my presence and my listening and my ability to be with you and things is also very much evangelizing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and proposing something to you that Jesus is here and mm-hmm. loves us. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Pew, 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 pew. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new intro to Poco a Poco podcast. I'm Father Mark Mary. And I'm Father Innocent. Uh, I'm Father P.T. <laughs> Father Angelus here again. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's the same afternoon. People mm-hmm. think he's being faithful. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all one day. <laughs> it's all one day. What's going on, everybody? We're doing all right? No place I'd rather be. Mm. That's That's here. right here with you. Father here Mark in his Mary. arms. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, something really important to share to begin with, but I forgot it. So anyway, this is the last episode on um, Habits for Holiness. Can I say something serious? Yeah. I'm really grateful for just you writing this book. And I think it's helped a lot of people. I, when I'm on the road, people say that they've really had a lot of fruit from it. So thank you. Thank you. Father Angelus. Very grateful, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the last, there's, there's, we, because the, the very last chapter, chapter nine, we actually did the front end of our, to our book study on the podcast. <laughs> chapter eight, I would say we did when we did the, the reform stuff. And so today is the last chapter that we're going to do together. Uh, before and leading into our next series on the heart of Jesus. Um, and today it's the, the perf- like what it means to share in the, so it, by baptism, we share in Christ's role as priest, prophet, and king. And so today we're going to talk about the prophetic, being prophetic. Cool? Sweet. Yeah, dude. Cool, cool, cool. Great. Um, before we get into that, so if you want to pick up the book to continue to work through it, have its, or essentialpress.org. Org. Forward slash. Forward slash holiness. Um, is it .com or it's, .org? I mean, on the back of the book, it's .com. <laughs> <Dang> <laughs> ascensionpress.com forward slash holiness. Link probably in the comments. Strong thing. finish, bro. Strong finish. Now, awesome. if you would like to give money. Now, if you'd like to give money, spirit, what is it? It's spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco. Beautiful. We're grateful for any, any, any support. Father Angelus, you are hearing confessions at NST at you, Mary. I was correct. Yeah, or spiritual direction. Did spiritual direction you, and confessions. Absolutely. Did you write a bio? I did. You? What did your bio it's say? It's the bio I've been using this year since there's a late, late on. Like, there's a couple of things I needed a bio for. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty awesome. Father <laughs> really? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, late on us. Like what it said. Did I, it happen to say you were a twin? I think <laughs> I said that <laughs> yeah, I was friar, vocation director, co host of of uh Poco, 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 Poco podcast, podcast and uh my favorite part about being a priest being a spiritual father or something like that nice one yeah what about you that. well you didn't make one up so they made one up for you well no i said i'm a friend, member of the franciscan friars the renewal it that's Boom. it that was your biography that was my biography bro only no, you, you had some like serious creds you could you have more yeah. creds than any of us <laughs> right but when it's like first of all who's gonna read it and who you know what I mean? Who? No, I don't. I mean, I don't it know. is funny. They post them next to get all all the priests and religious that are there, and you see all these faces, and then they have this little barcode you can sign up electronically. Like, yeah, all mine's in paper, paper about. Ba- but I want to tell you about a moment. I was at uh, UNL campus. Yeah. I met a young gal there. She was awesome. I, um, I forgot her name, but you know who I'm talking about because she's like someone who's she's awesome. like she's like. Can you just tell Father Mark Mary that 
his his book and videos just mean a lot to me. And I was like, yeah, he's kind of overrated. But. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I'm thinking like, no, I, you know, if you're going to sign up for spiritual direction and there weren't that many slots, like no one's going to, no one cares about <clears throat> my work as the general almoner of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. I would have put it's it down. Important there. job. <clears throat> in solid. Important job. <laughs> but solid it also, resume. it's like, it's kind of this weird, like, because like, you know, it's like a public sign-up sheet and maybe not all, I don't know. It's like some guys get more sign-ups and it's like, oh, yeah, why, you know, oh, why'd you want to talk to him? Not me. Did you have an equal amount of men and women? No, not even close. More women. By far. That's what they do. Women, women. Father like Gabriel Mary, 95% women. Yeah. What about you? My charism seems <laughs> to be with young men. That's good. You're rocking it, dude. That's good. You're the vocation so mostly, director. Men, mostly That's men. why you're the vocation director. No, PT, what, what about, what are your charism that? I, I had nobody. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> I wasn't there. Yeah. It's just a thing. Next it, year. Ave Maria. Love. Do it, bro. That'd be great. We could talk about this at a different time. <laughs> um, no, but <laughs> seriously. Yeah. But it's definitely, there's like, a, you know, I'm trying to be aware. Like, there's definitely like, okay, I'm at another table with just women again. <laughs> like it's just like maybe you know I don't want to but you have a spiritual father I totally do and, yeah, then, totally. and that was like somebody came up hey can you sit with me I just felt like you've like really been a good father to me this it's couple days yeah and so I don't have I don't have a problem with that um, but definitely four four spiritual director requests all from women you know what I mean you that's, got that, that's my thing you got it I had to say no to all four but. feel free to email them if you <laughs> <laughs> I can't take on any more um, that's a nice place to be by the yeah. way <laughs> to be able to say publicly, I can't take on anymore because people know it's good. Um, if you came up to me at one point and said, you want to be a sister and are visiting some sisters and felt like I didn't care. I apologize for that. I like, you know, like when uh, I was in, uh, I, heard, I got some feedback about that. I didn't want to hurt anybody. You know what I mean? Um, but it's like when somebody, sometimes in priest mode, I mean, like, I don't know what's going to come out. Mm -hmm. And so I have like my, obviously I'm not generally very expressive anyway. Yeah, it's true. But my, like my priest recept, receptor thing could be pretty flat. Might've hurt somebody's feeling. So I apologize for that. I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah, no, yeah, so yeah, totally. you get, and I'll, yeah, you just want to, I you're, care. You're, you have some like other receptors as well. They're kind of flat, like morning, like your morning <laughs> receptor. <laughs> or, his, or his voice intonation receptor. All of them. <laughs> I'm just kind of a flat guy. Well, this is a fun game. Let's think about it. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just getting fun, my way. Bro, I know. I'm not really. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I, I think I know who I am. I think you I do. Know who I am. Bro, you rock. And we you. love you for that. Anybody want to compliment my vest one more time before we get to things? <laughs> Still wearing it. Is it? Still. Did you get that like off of um like one of those infomercials? I'm trying like, to get sponsored for 19.95. You get this vest with all these jackets and it comes with a pen. All these pockets. Yeah, and it's something like some tar that could fix a boat. It's like you know, it's like never stains. It's right. like <laughs> dump it in white paint for 24 hours and then rinse it off with a hose. Right. <laughs> it's still good. <laughs> or only 19.99. We're starting to get sponsors wow, in order that now. Would be awesome. Wow. Throwing an extra. What about, knife or something. What about like putting patches on it, you know? Yeah, dude. Of like some, something like tied or whatever it is. I don't know. Well, t something tied? I don't know. Like some like public thing of- Like a sponsor. Sponsor. No, like yeah. race cars. Mm -hmm. If you'd yeah. like to sponsor one of Father Mark Mary's pockets, <laughs> Poco Poco. Wow, there you go. There you go. Let's put like a sticker on six, it. Six, oh, six available. Man. Um, do we need to say thank you? Speaking, speaking of a sponsor, do we need to say thank you for all the cookies that were sent? Thank you for all of the Cheryl's cookies that were sent. We got six different orders, six different <laughs> donations of Cheryl's cookies after Father Gabriel's shameless plug. plug. <laughs> rat, rat. Is that a rap? That, that, was, that, that might a be a, is that a rap, rap move. move? Oh, that yeah. might be next. There's, there's rap moves and then there's weasel moves, which is one level up. Oh, okay. You might have this. Don't let's not to pretend for one second those cookies weren't very delicious and appreciated. <laughs> I so, didn't know they're bougie cookies. Did you oh, know they're yeah, bougie yeah, cookies? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're kind of, yeah, We were begging for bougie cookies. No, no, no. I apologize for that. We were begging for anything. Father Gabriel was begging. If we scandalized you with our bougie I really particularly liked how like we were trying to save them because they're only good for a couple days and you put them in the freezer oh, yeah. and then someone else would bring them back out and like it was just full. But they, the 20 and the, I think we had a visitors at some, the, the 30 guys who ate the Cheryl's cookies enjoyed them. We're never going to turn out down cookies. No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, or chicken. <laughs> bring it back. Just bring it back. So check this out. This is what we're going to talk about. Evangelical. We're going to talk about the sharing in the prophetic work of Jesus. Come on. And I want to, sh I want to share with an example, which 
which I think like is what we're talking about. And this, I was down at, so again, this is back in Florida, NST, Focus New Staff Training. It's his happy place. He's been talking about it. <laughs> That's where he wants to it is my happy place. It is my happy place. Um, there's this thing called placement day. Placement oh. day is when all of the missionaries who are like, get their new, like they found out, find out what campus they're going to go it's to. It's a right? thing. It's a big thing. Um, for some of them, it's, and, it's, I don't know, and it makes sense. Like for some of them, it's a very hard thing because you're like 22 years old and you're going to be asked to go live somewhere that you've never heard of that you've never heard of before and it's like your first time it's a whole year like so that's a big that's a big you know that's a big gift if that was hard please listen to our last episode on <laughs> making, <laughs> offer it baby offer it <laughs> yeah but it's hard it is hard um but one of the things they did at least in our region which i was with the south and the east is like they some like they get like super hype like into some of like their schools and lsu the students from lsu had access to like a, a, a golf cart and they turned it into like basically like a Mardi Gras float. So they had, you know, they like had all like the Mardi Gras beads and they had, I don't know what else, they had, they had like music playing and they got all kind of dressed up appropriately. And it was the, the cart of one of the families there. And so they had like these like cute little like three-year-old girls like, like sitting like queens. Um, and it's just like the whole thing was super attractive, right? And part of this is because Louisiana still has like a, a ton of culture. Yeah, yeah, right. too, there's just sure. maybe in the states it's, there's few regions where there's like a really deep sort of culture that they love and have expressions to and I just remember I remember seeing it and it's like man like I really I really want something like that <clears throat> right because it's like there's there's this culture there's this meaning there's something beautiful and attractive about it and when it was like true it's like I saw it's like dang I really I, like it's really attractive to me and I think that's like what if we live the fullness of our Christianity and our prophetic witness well it's in such a way that people, when they see it, they're like, mm. there's something there that I don't have. And like, I want more mm -hmm. and I want that. And this is part of that, like attractive witness. Does that, any guys, any immediate thoughts about that? My immediate thought was when you first said that you wanted a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> I do want a golf cart. I'll be in Maria, Florida. Everyone's cruising around in golf carts. Mm -hmm. It's true. No. That's it. I mean, that's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's, that's the, the simple definitions of what it means to be prophetic. Like mm -hmm. we got to make this attractive. Like we, it doesn't work any other way. Right. Like you can't, like, it's not a program. It's not like this, this thing. We just like kind of sell people. It's, it's a life. It's in a relationship with Jesus. And the only way that that's like, it's passed on or, or kind of spreads fires by like, Hey man, this guy's living it. And he's a, he's a prophet, right? He, he communicates. It, in, in the depths of who he is, that Jesus is alive mm -hmm. and he's real and he's risen from the dead. And this means something for us, right? So, I mean, more to come, but I think it's, this is it. This is, you gotta make it attractive. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of the woman who, right? She breaks the alabaster bar, uh, <laughs> bar breaks We're the alab this alabaster jar, jar. <laughs> and anoints Jesus' feet right before his death, right? And it's like almost a prophetic sign of anointing, anointing his body before he dies, right? But the beautiful thing about that is that the, it says the perfume filled the house, right? And mm -hmm. so when you're prophetic, there's an aromatic nature to it where it's mm. beautiful. It's go oh on, gosh, it's beautiful, <laughs> and it's it's very attractive, right? And and people want to be a part of it. And so just to confirm that, like when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing as as operating as a prophet, I think people are like wow, there's like I want that. Like there's something attractive and beautiful about it, and it just lifts you up. Mm -hmm. So I'm not you're, quite you're sure. Really <laughs> You were like surprised. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, this guy actually is profound. You're not a complete idiot. I didn't know you had it in you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for coming out. I don't actually have anything bad. I'm very touching. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Perfect. Back to you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I like spicy Edge. <laughs> Edge, after three episodes, Edge yeah. just gets a little tired. This is some spicy. <laughs> Are you going to throw any edgy vocabulary again? <laughs> no, that, we have, that we have to cut out and put. But I will. In. I will throw out. Didn't it rain on on uh, placement day? Uh, yeah, exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but only during the time that they were doing it, so everyone was out there like getting in the rain. That's even odd, which, which makes it, it even rains, more attractive. Yeah. <laughs> it rains a lot though. Yeah, yeah totally. Every day. But usually it's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. And there's some dude in like a tiger suit. <laughs> I'm just, I'm a big Louisiana fan. Oh, me too. Shout out to Father Andrew Merrick, vocation director, at LSU. Come on down there. Father Josh Johnson's getting, Josh Johnson. What up, working there. Did you have any um, people in um, mascot costumes? Well, that, I mean the, the tiger, the tiger one. Oh, they said, when tiger. he said when he said there was a tiger, I was like, when he said there was a tiger, that I didn't hear tiger. tiger. Wow. I had heard tiger, but there was a lot of Benedictine colleges mascot was at you, Mary, at all sorts of stuff. Going what's on. what's their mascot? 
Bird? Raven. 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 Stay focused, people. Okay. Damn. <laughs> okay. ADD. Here we go. All right. So, so, okay. We're baptized. This is something that happens. We're given a share in Christ's own life, particularly his role of priest, prophet, and king. And these are not... Um, these are not, what's the word when you can choose to do something or not choose something? <laughs> Voluntary. Voluntary these suggestion. Are, these, yeah, they're not suggestions. Like these are, these are actually part of who you are and this is part of what you're called to. This is kind of like part of the dignity, duty, responsibility of the baptized. And right, and so this would be kind of like in our own work, we're talking about like evangelization, which is proclaiming Christ to the world, the good news of Christ in the world. And, and I think we want, at least today, um, focus on this kind of like what I kind of refer to as this kind of like John the Baptist approach to it. And, and I think it's like, do you guys know CL, Communion Liberation, mm-hmm. Jasani? I think it's Jasani who has this, this line more or less about, um, like, there's nothing more boring than an answer to a question you haven't asked, mm. right? And sometimes, like, we go about evangelization, um, sort of giving answers to questions that people aren't actually asking. And so, they don't actually care about what we're saying, right? And, and so, trying to, to live in such a way, which, pro, like, which is provocative, which mm-hmm. provokes questions, but also like provokes sort of desire, desire and attraction. Mm. And so for us to live this way, for us to live a prophetic witness, like we have to be the real deal. You know what I mean? You have to live it. It has to be something where we were, you know, the Lord's in it. It gives us this deeper purpose, direction, meaning, but also it has to like, you know, it has to actually like, you can't be too shy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point you have to be able to kind of put yourself out there. Cause if we just live like everybody else across the board, well then, like how how are these conversations going to be happening? How are people going to actually know that there's something different about knowing Jesus and not knowing Jesus? Because I think there's a heck of a lot of people who um, sh- like maybe they live in the States, whatever, and they know of Christianity and they know of Jesus, but they also know Christians. And they're like, well, I know Christians and I know dudes who aren't and there doesn't seem to be any difference. So what's like, what's yeah. like, like, I, I don't really get it. Um, so, I, so I do think, we kind of, I, I do get into it quite a bit and have to roll in this, but I want to kind of get super practical unless somebody has some, some immediate thoughts. No, just to confirm the word as far as like getting out there and doing it because like the father doesn't pour out <clears throat> the spirit that is timid, but it's like a courageous mm-hmm. spirit for us to be able to go out there and, and boldness and right. Like the apostles right after Jesus dies, they're in the upper room and then the Holy spirit comes and then they're out preaching, you know? And so if there is like this, yeah. Attitude of like, ah, I don't want to be out there. I don't want to like pray through that. Like, and yeah. ask the Lord, like, give me the spirit, give me the courage, give me the grace to be able to get out there and do something or, or put me in a situation too. And, and it will happen. Like, yeah. Real. And I think the boldness comes mm-hmm. in just with the confidence that he's going to use your temperament, your right. personality to, to live as a prophet. <clears throat> and it kind of makes me think about there's different ways to be a prophet. And maybe this is where we're going to go, but like, you can be a prophet, you know, like, you can get, speak a prophetic word. You can speak up, do a prophetic action. Mm-hmm. Jesus does all of, like Jesus is the full range of this. Right. So sometimes like you're going to have a lot of bros who a lot of us go out and preach like preachers, but some mm-hmm. brothers aren't preachers, but right. brother Colby's a pro, uh, prophetic by prophetic gesture. Like mm-hmm. when he, like he serves the poor and he like goes and like touches someone's like face and he like holds it and speaks truth. You're like, that's like a prophetic gesture mm-hmm. and Colby's mm-hmm. rocking it. He's right. being himself. Yeah. Right. So everybody has different gifts, but we, but the prophetic can, can come through those things. Yeah, and there's nothing private about it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, you can't be, be a disciple of the Lord and be private mm-hmm. and you can't play it safe. And there's always a temptation to make, yeah, to not make that extra move. Um, we, we live a life that's used to that. I think guys are encouraged. Guys have the natural inclination to do so. But like, what does it mean to live in the world and recognize that like I'm called to be public witness, right? And called in my own way, in my own circle, in my own people, to, to actually spread the gospel, to be a witness of the gospel. It's good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember when I was in, when I was like just kind of all in for Jesus, freshman, sophomore year of college, I was kind of off on this, like how we did it. <coughs> I, particularly because I had like a, um, and I think a lot of people do it, sort of an insecurity about like what I needed to correct in other people. Like I was kind of like, I was kind of like the, like the, the police really. You know what I mean? Like, I think some, because you feel like, okay, like there's part of the Christian call, which does involve like correcting people and sort of inviting mm. people higher and all that sort of stuff. And if like early on for a lot of people, it can kind of get a little bit sort of probably a little bit weird where you kind of take responsibility for probably what's not. Mm. Um, and I just remember having like a buddy who kind of like, who we, we knew each other. He did go to kind of the youth group and stuff like that. And then he kind of went off. And, and I just remember being like, saying to him like, bro, we're buddies, but like, hey, you got to go to confession. Like, hey, don't you, you, and it was like, like, it wasn't like, hey, do you want to go to confession? I'm going to confession. It was just like, like, 
this kind of like kind of straight, you got to go to confession. Like you're a sinner and you're bad and you need, you're in sin and you need to do this thing. And guess what? Like he, nothing happened. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't do anything. He probably just actually had a, a, more, a growing distaste of Christianity because of that. And that's somehow like, there's somehow we can like sometimes act like that. Like, okay, like stop it. Um, but if, but we want to like, if that's, that's not always the most effective. But then I remember um, later on in college, just going to confession and one of my roommates who kind of was on the edge, like Catholic, but not super into it. It's like, Oh, Hey, what are you doing tonight? So, Oh, I'm just yeah going down to the church over for confession. He's like, Oh, I should probably go too. Can I come on? Can I come along? It's been a long time. Right. And I think that's for, at least for me, I do think there's different ways this looks for different people. For me, I think that's kind of more of the the call or, or the strategy is, is living it. Um, but also living it in a way which I'm not hiding it. And then, sort of inviting people along when, when they want, when they want to come along. <laughs> um, and so like what this would look like for, for lay people, for example, is, you know, it's like if, it, if it's work or if it's school, it's like, you know, first it's Monday, Monday back in the office. So like, Hey, what'd you do this weekend? You know? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, I went to mass with my family and, you know, it was like, and like, you like, you know, like, Oh, I went on a treat and I helped out with this thing. Just when you're, I made, you know, Saturday is kind of my holy hour day. So I woke up and made a holy hour and they're like, oh, like what's like, what's that? So I just think, I think that's like, there's people who are listening, who practice the faith and like are serious and like do things, but they might be afraid to actually kind of share that with people. And so when somebody asks you a question, like, don't be afraid to say, oh, this is, this is what I'm doing. Right. And this helps to bring sort of Christianity into people's, into people's lives. Yeah. And that's tough. <clears throat> it's tough to come from that place of like, Hey, this is what it is. Cause it's a real struggle. Sometimes you don't want to yeah. be judged. You don't want to be made fun of, but I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, um, it's worth it. Yeah. You know, like it's better to be vocal about what you did as opposed to not, and potentially missing out an opportunity that somebody can have an encounter with Christ um, and be the prophet that he's asking you to be. It kind of makes me think about what we talked about last episode. When we talked about the priestly being a living our priestly identity that you don't actually have to look for things mm-hmm. to the, be more priestly or make your offering. There are a lot of prophetic things that are like built into our life just to be to open and honest mm-hmm. with our life. Or I was thinking about, I think one of the brothers, um, yeah, had this, his similar college experience. He was hanging out with his buddies and one of the guys like prayed before his meal and he mm-hmm. made the sign of the cross. Right. And it's just like, whoa, that's like a prophetic gesture. That guys just, just, he was just being real. Like he didn't even like impose it. Hey guys, should we all pray every, you know, mm-hmm. like he just did it himself and said a prayer. But I was like, whoa, what's going on there? You mm-hmm. know, it's built in. And it, in the small ways we can be prophets. And, and again, it might, we have to, might have to grow in confidence, but it works. Yeah. And it, it, it just in the, in the small ways. I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to say the perfect thing, to say the right thing. And, and I think we, we think that having the, like the best argument about something or knowing about everything and then being able to say it at the perfect family gathering. So I give this teaching on this or, or whatever. And it's often, uh, telling people like, whoa, whoa, arguments generally don't convert anyone and aren't very attractive, you know, but what does it mean to share from my own experience, what God has done in my life? And then let that just kind of settle in people's hearts and and be convicting to people rather than having this like perfect thing to say or this perfect argument to be made. I think it takes pressure off when you're like, actually, you know, I don't think you have to worry about that. Just, just reveal what God is doing in your life Mm -hmm. and the fruit of that and what it, what it, what it gives you in peace and freedom in the Lord and let, let people then provoked, be provoked by questions or, or whatever, but it's, it's coming from knowing that I don't have to like have this perfect mm-hmm. argument to be made. Can I share a story? Please do. Okay. Um, so a couple of weeks ago now, maybe two and a half, three weeks ago, uh, I was out with our, uh, our novices on a, sorry, not novices, first year temporary professed. Uh, we're playing basketball at a park in Newark. And, um, and it's kind of cool because Father Emmanuel just shared with us as far as like sharing the gospel, a little bit what we're talking about, like the charismatic nature of it and just going out and preaching, but to anybody you meet. And so he just shared wonderful things about like praying for an encounter with somebody else and being open to people you meet and stuff like that. And that's not, that's very much not me in the sense of like, like we're talking about, like walking up to somebody on the streets or whatever it is and be like, hey, have you, have you heard about Jesus Christ? And, and there are people who are like that, but that's just, once again, not my personality, mm-hmm. not my temperament. So anyway, so we're playing basketball and, uh, and as we're playing, I get poked in the eye uh, pretty seriously. I get a corneal abrasion, um, which I whoa, found out later. Whoa. It's like when I was closed, I couldn't even open it. And so I just sat on the bench and um, we were playing basketball against a bunch of guys just from the neighborhood there. And uh, none of us obviously had our habits on. Uh, we were all in shorts and t-shirts. So there's no real distinguishing thing that like says, I'm a priest or I'm a friar. And, um, and so I'm just sitting down in conversation 
uh, next to this guy. He's like, hey, make sure you put ice on it, blah, blah, this and that. I was like, all right, cool. And then um, he said, where are you guys from? I was like, oh, I live in the Bronx. He's like, oh, no way. I live in the Bronx too. He said, where do you live? And so like a conversation just ensued once again. And uh, he said, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a priest. He goes, and like his face dropped and then started opening up like, well, I haven't been to church in a long time. I was like, well, why, why not? You know, like, and so like a real conversation started. But like, if I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm just, you know, I live in the Bronx and I kind of just do like nice things, you know, like, but once again, it, it took that that risk, if you will, of saying like who I really am or what I was doing or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And, and obviously it's a little bit easier for me because yeah, I can't really hide from this fact that I'm a priest. I'm a priest. That's what I do. You know, <laughs> but, uh, but sometimes it could be that, that uh, I don't want to share that part of my life, of my story, of my day uh, with this person, um, but take a risk and it could lead just to open, open up to bigger things and better things mm-hmm. for that person. And so, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. Cause I, I, a couple of things that, that come to mind is, I don't know if anyone has any insight because I do think there's probably space for both and probably kind of a, a bit of a variety. And I do think guys, people are called to be sort of like very like uh, verbal evangelizers as well. I think that's a thing. Yeah, for sure. Is mm-hmm. that, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, you're, we're not saying like, don't do that. We're just saying like, uh, it's also okay to kind of be you mm-hmm. and to allow the Lord to work, I think through your own personality and temperament. Like I know for me, like my, my strategy has always been like question asking as opposed to kind of like talk giving. Like, Absolutely. so when I'm, I'm encountering somebody, I like to hear the story and kind of talk to them that way and sort of like giving them that witness of like being seen, being cared about. Yeah, absolutely. As opposed to kind of kicking off with the teaching. But I've, I know some of our other brothers do that and it, it works. But I, but I just want to kind of speak into because you want to be open to being pushed and challenged by the Lord. But you don't have to, if it's like, you don't want to reduce evangelization to like, giving a pamphlet and a, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, an talk. elevator pitch or something yeah. like that. And I think, I think what, oh, sorry, go oh. please. I just think what kind of accompanies that is that, is that an interior transformation. Like when we're living it, when we're praying, then I think the words mean something and mm-hmm. there's like, there's a, there's a gentleness and a mercy, right? So it's like, it's not, cause it can be just a pitch. Okay, here's what I'm supposed to say. Okay, mm-hmm. well, this person hasn't been in confession in 10 years. Okay, like, you know, you access some sort of line. Right. But when you're living it and there's interior transformation, it's like who you are. And so it comes across as like a deep desire for this person to experience what you've been, you've experienced with Jesus. Right. So the interior transformation leads to these, this communication of, man, like I, I want, I want you to have this gift as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's something different than just kind of this disconnected like line that I'm supposed to, to say to you because I'm afraid or like, I guess I need to tell you, you need to go to mass on Sunday, you know, but it's, it's in my heart. Right. I've just moved. I particularly like being interested in the other person is that maybe the bridge that allows us to share, um, to, to listen and to, to be vulnerable and to, to receive them. And then mm-hmm. how the Lord uses that is this place of like this, this good news that I'm sharing, but like to start out like, Hey, yes. Yeah, so tell me about you. Tell me about, you know, mm-hmm. and, and be able to make it about <clears throat> yeah. them. I, I think that's beautiful. Pretty yeah. wise. Have I shared the story of uh, the brother listening down in Antigua? Guatemala. I don't think so. I was down there. I was, I was, um, what year was I? I was a probably second year <clears throat> temporary professor. And I was down with one of the other brothers who's senior brother, just my first time in Antigua. And, and so in Guatemala language school, and we go for walks in the night cause we had sort of free nights. And so like he's the younger brother. I'm very much letting the older brother take the lead. And I remember like we were walking through the park and this, uh, one of the, the dudes who hung out in the park sort of like caught us and started talking to us. And he knew father Terry. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, of course, right? everybody does. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, he's like going on and he starts to like monologue and like 10 minutes go by 15 minutes, go by 20 minutes, go by Percy. like, and I start looking, I start looking at the brother, like how long, you know, cause again, I'm, I'm letting him, I'm letting him lead this thing that the senior brother, I'm just like, okay, should I, we, should we jump in here? Should we? And then, but he just keeps listening, keeps asking. And he's like, kind of like, and he still asks questions, things like that kind of engage this, this guy. And literally it was like, I don't know, man, it must've been, it must've been over an hour. I mean, I it was, it was at least 45 minutes. I'm pretty sure it was over an hour. We just <laughs> stood there and listened to this guy, like pretty much on a monologue that wasn't necessarily going anywhere. And so, uh, and then like, it starts to get dark. So we start to head back and kind of at some point with the brother, I'm like, so um, like something like that, like, would you ever like, you know, interrupt or like, like, well, I kind of like, I was like, well, basically it's like, what the heck were you like? What was going on over there? Um, and he's like, you know, bro, like, I just don't really feel like I have like a lot that I can give to people, um, but I can listen to them. Mm. So that's, that's just, beautiful. that's just what I do. 
And I, and for me, that like spoke very deeply for that man, right? That's a really deep encounter of like Christ and the church and his actually willingness to waste time to sacrifice, you know, for him and just pay attention to him. And I think that's like a beautiful kind of part of this witness of um, basically like, we're all going to have different gifts that we can put at this disposal, um, but to use that gift. And for some of us and a lot of us, it might just be being like a prophetic listener, mm. giving a witness to that. the world that, that God, that somebody in this world cares about them and is willing to spend time for them. And when the, if the moment comes, then you can, you know, point them to like, yeah, and I put this in the name of Jesus, right? Because I want you to know like mm. your dignity as, as a beloved son or daughter of, of the father. Beautiful. I just think that's edgy because... I think when we think of evangelization and we think of being a prophetic witness, it's like what I'm doing, what I'm giving you. Yeah. And to think about that, I can give this gift of listening and encountering you in this particular way. I think that's great. That's unique. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah, a, a pretty bold invitation to be able to kind of exercise like and use that gift. But, but um, were you going to say something? No, it's different now. It's okay. okay. <clears throat> um, we have honorings. And I don't know if you guys experienced this, like honoring. So honoring in, in a friary, it's like brother's feast day. And about, everyone kind of goes around and says something nice about them essentially. And they, I don't know about you guys, but they can be like a pretty um, convicting experience because mm -hmm. you like all oh, this, this guy keeps getting sort of honored for something that he's doing that I'm like not doing at all. And it's right. like, okay, well, it's room for growth. It's like a really sort of like <clears throat> strategic mm -hmm whatever you're calling people to better. But one of the things that all, comes up all the time, like, right? Like is, um, yeah, I just really appreciate you, bro. Cause like, you always like, you know, make time for me, you know, bro. I know like you're really busy, but like whenever like I need something, you like, you like stop and give me, give me some time and attention. And that, that speaks like really deeply and eloquently to people, especially with so many people who kind of struggle with like, does anyone care? You mm -hmm. know, that, that I think, I think kind of a prophetic listening and giving people your time is like a really beautiful and, and, and eloquent, if you will, um, witness of, of Christ. Yeah. And it just speaks of the heart of the father where he's always listening, right? Mm. Like that's the whole point of it. Mm. <laughs> it's always, Come on. <laughs> he's, always serious, that's beautiful. <laughs> he, he's always listening to our prayers, to our thoughts, to everything. And it just takes, yeah, us, first of all, to vocalize it, to say it to him, but even more so, to be that same listening ear, if you will, to those mm -hmm. around us where they don't feel like they have anybody, um, whether it be the poor, whether it be the person in your cell phone list that you know struggled with, whatever it is, but yeah, just to listen to whoever it is. And then maybe at the end of the conversation to bring it to prayer or, hey, look, <clears throat> it's beautiful. Can we just bring it to the Lord and let's pray a Hail Mary together, whatever it is, you know, but in a simple, beautiful way, but just want just to listen and just to be attentive to the person because yeah, that's where people experience peace and goodness mm -hmm. and just that, okay, somebody else is with me in the struggle. Obviously the person in front of me, but, but the Lord is also too. I love we're just kind of breaking it open. There's so many ways to be a prophet, mm -hmm. right? And, and we do need to be bold and like we do, we can't hide. And, you know, like we've all talked about that you have to be kind of, kind of in it, mm -hmm. right? But there's just so many ways, like to, to whether it's a word or a gesture or listening or right. presence, like, like a prophetic presence, like there's just something beautiful because all of this communicates the love of the father. Mm -hmm. All this, all this communicates the life of Jesus, the way he looks, the way he sees, the way he has mercy, right? Um, I think that's the gift of our life as, as, as baptized sons and daughters that, that we have this capacity to be a prophet at all times, whether you're, you're looking at your kids or whether you're, you're out on the streets, right? Like it's the way you live your life. Um, exactly. I just, I love how we're kind of breaking it open. And in, in a world that's kind of oversaturated with mm -hmm. words mm -hmm. and, people talking and saying, having opinions and yeah. all that. We have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> For the very beginning, it was uncomfortable with this. No, I'm just kidding. But the idea of the proposed, the Christian proposal is that my, my presence and my listening and my ability to be with you in things is also very much evangelizing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and proposing something to you that Jesus is here and mm -hmm. loves us. And I think, sorry, I think just one thing too, is just that we listen also to, to the father as he moves or the spirit, as he moves us to, to, yeah, just to encounter other people or like, hey, Father, I have this desire in my heart to be a prophet, you know, or Holy Spirit, and, and, you know, instruct my heart in these ways. Don't just say the prayer and like walk away, but like, okay, sit and listen, like be quiet. Okay. And then like, if it comes to your mind that, oh my gosh, uh, Susan hasn't been spoken to in a week, maybe I should give her a call or, you know, whatever it is. Like, or the Holy man. Spirit will come. Yeah. Yeah. In a, in a real and a beautiful way. And just to listen. And then as you listen to others, you're able to listen to him more and how he's moving and operating other people's lives. And and what <laughs> what he desires to happen. Sorry about that. Why are you so jumpy? I just 
You've punched me before. Um, okay, that's a lie. You never punched me. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of bring things in real tight, real quick. Bring them. This is what you do. We're gonna try have, we're gonna try and have a slightly shorter episode, bro. We're doing it. Is, is that all right? Always. Yeah. Everyone's getting a little shiny. Well, foreheads are getting a little shiny, bro. It's, it's sweaty. Sweaty. Um, I'm cool. <laughs> you're cool. Cool as a cucumber. You are cool. Cool cat. Um, all right. So our like our prophetic witness it, it is it's it's part of the fruit. It's part of the duties and responsibilities that we're given. Part of the dignity that we're given by our baptism. And it's not optional, right? Like there is there is a real sort of um, evangelical, if you will, like demand to share Christ with the world and to make Him known and to grow the kingdom of God. This is you doing you, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, I love it. I love it. Um, I think the number one though, like our 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 witness, a prophetic witness, it has to be authentic. You actually have to be <clears throat> trying to follow Jesus. You actually have to be living different than people. And part of that is being authentic about being like a sinner, you know, being authentic, being <laughs> humble. Say, like mm-hmm. being, being humble, being authentic enough to be able to say like, I'm sorry when you mess up, things like that. It doesn't mean being perfect, but it does yeah. mean being like sincere and authentic, right? And part of the expression of that is gonna be actually being a Christian and or living like Catholicism and living it beautifully, praying every day, uh, getting to mass at least on Sunday, hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe another day, if you can do that, um, what would be some other things like having Friday be a slightly more penitential day, right? Having Sunday be a day that's more protected for the family. Cause all of these things, like if you're like, Oh no, you know what? Sorry. Like I can't, I can't go hang. I can't go whatever. I can't go get a burger on Friday because you know, no, and like in the church, you know, we have this practice of like not eating meat on Fridays, like being able to live like that, um, is what we're talking about. It has to be authentic. It has to be part of the fruit of your real life. Um, I think, uh, what would be some other ones? I, I think some practical stuff is like um, part of like how you can give a witness. I think one action, I really do encourage people to, to pray uh, like before a meal when you're in public. Mm-hmm. I think that's like for a lot of people, it's really uncomfortable. But again, like it's just, it's just a little way to sort of bring Christ in the situation. A little mm-hmm. way to give a witness to Christ. It's not super aggressive or whatever, just to kind of create that space. Um, and then I think, Really, one of my favorite ones are are cutting are like being really prudent about cuss, cussing, complaining, and, and gossiping. Mm-hmm. I think we if if we can if we can speak differently mm-hmm. than other people, people are going to notice. Absolutely. Um, and I've just kind of I've I've, <laughs> I've, I've I've seen that. Um, we don't have to go down that. <laughs> so so to to do a little examination, like how how's your language is like. Is it different? Because I think this is part of the attractive prophetic witness, which is in a way which isn't, doesn't people put people on their like defense mechanisms, whatever, right there, right? I think those work. Um, and then um, it's got to be, it's got to be authentic. It's got to be attractive. Like, hey, celebrate Sunday well, celebrate the Easter octave well, celebrate Christmas well, the like saints. celebrate the saints well, right? Like, and that's the thing back with like the Louisiana kids, like they, they celebrated well their culture. Mm. And yeah. because they celebrated well, it was attractive, you know, to celebrate, to celebrate well. Um, and then, and the last thing is this, like all the, the all of our evangelization is, is like sharing in the evangelization of the anointed one of like, it's the work of the Holy spirit. Right. So it's the Lord. It's the, it's, if it's going to be fruitful, it's gotta be of the Lord. And mm-hmm. so again, like our own, essentially, if we're going to be evangelizers, we have to be ev- evangelized. Like we have to be men and women filled with the life of God. We have to be men and women who pray well, we have to be men and women who are who are serious disciples of Jesus, and that will make our our efforts of of bringing Christ into the world fruitful. Amen, bro. Well said. You got it. You got it. Um, or I got it. So yeah, I think, I think that's. Got it. I think that's going to be it. That's, that's great. great. It's strong. Yeah. So, uh, if you want some more about it or some very practical stuff, you can again pick up Ascension or Habits for Holiness Ascension Press dot. Com, com forward slash holiness this was this is the end of i think of the poco a poco it's a nice picture promotion you, we got some cookies from ascension saying thanks for the that's awesome what do you mean we? you had you actually had the cookie last night that had their logo on it yeah. i just went yeah what do you mean we why you can take one there's for the some road. yeah there's oh, some there's a, okay good okay <laughs> um and if you'd like to support the podcast spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco as we bring it in for a close a couple of um Reviews that we need to review real quick. Mm. Fun ones, ready? We had a short episode. Now we're going to do reviews. Relax, relax, <laughs> relax, relax. So shout out to, um, to Alex, who uh, is a big listener and has been uh, sort of raised by Benedictines, having a little bit of a Franciscan 
thing. Wow. And she makes the comment that my spiritual director, like my poor spiritual director has no idea what in the pocket means. <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, she's talking about trying to be in the, in the pocket. pocket and her spiritual baby. director doesn't have any idea what that means. Um, and she says she's team father innocent. Mm. Yeah. Do you know about Alex, this? There's like one other person on team. Yeah, no, there's, no, there's two parts. <laughs> I have a couple people on my team. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah you're, you're the underdog team. You're you're the guys. You're I play underdog well. You're um you play underdog well. I feel like I was gonna make this joke about Father Innocent, but now we're on you. Do you know who Do you know who Kevin Jonas is? <laughs> is that like one of the Jonas brothers? That was one of the Jonas brothers. But I just learned at the focus training that like if like Kevin Jonas was like your favorite, it was like not like cool at all. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, dude, he's on your team, team bro. Team Team Father Angels is like being. Team Kevin Jonas. I'm. I'm. A, I don't know if I should be offended. Or <laughs> no, that's a that's a compliment. Oh, you're you're kind of sweaty. <laughs> um, and then what else do we have? I think that was it. We already talked about the other the running thing, and um, now we'll just bring it in for a prayer. Sweet, nice, nice smooth transition. In prayer. So, yeah. so smooth. Father Angelus, Kevin Jonas, brother jo- Kevin, <laughs> brother Jonas, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, uh, for this. Yeah, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for allow, allowing us to be evangelized by you first. We just pray for a new grace in all of our hearts uh, to be able to have our hearts be open and, and moved by you, Lord, by your mercy, by your goodness. Allows us to be set free, Jesus, to go and be present, to, to listen, and to be able to spread the good news of, of you to others. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and thank you for now this time together in your name jesus we pray amen amen, amen. amen. father the son of the holy spirit amen. Amen. i love how you kind of brought him for landing and you like took back off that was good me or him <laughs> no his him prayer. Wow. his prayer like it was coming in we did it father innocent we went through the program habits for holiness <laughs> now there we're it all, is now we're all holy we're all 12 steps to holiness habited <laughs> for holiness Habited for holy nits. Congratulations, all you holy people. Look at that picture. We did it. It was awesome. Picture. We, we've been on a journey. We did it. All right. See you next week. God Peace, bless. y'all. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know 